so we're about to go, we're just having some beer with our brunch, and then we're going to go interview Dion Moss, the final interview before he leaves to go to Berlin permanently. So we're going to cut to that now. You've written two bestsellers. Yes. You've produced numerous amounts of award-winning TV shows and documentaries. Yes. yes. Now, what is there left for Dion Moss to do? Um, okay, so I think that this country as a creative person has certain limitations um, in that if, if you are dealing primarily with a mainstream market, um, the, the possibilities are endless. But uh, if you are dealing with a slightly marginal or alternative market, whichever way term you want to use, um, you get to a point where you can't get further in this country. I'm seeing it around me with some of my artist friends, uh, people like um, you know, Umi van Niekerk, who's a um, who's a, a animator, um, uh, and and various other friends, and and this is the point I've reached. I've I've reached the point where, you know, do I want? You know, it's nice having a bestseller. It's nice getting the awards, but but most of them don't come with any financial rewards, um, which means that. If you're sticking to your guns and you're not sucking Satan's cock and you're not at the point where you're doing everything for money, um, um, finances do become an issue. I'm, uh, I'm getting older. <clears throat> it would be nice to be financially slightly more secure than what I am. And I can't compromise. So um, the only thing left to do is to go... And seek for Gruner Weifelder, you know. I need to, I need to go and, and find a new challenge, and uh, and this challenge is unfortunately not in South Africa. Where is it then, if it's not? Okay, in South so Africa? my uh, my 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 wife Vida, um, she uh, she got this really amazing high end corporate job in uh, um, in Berlin, um, so uh, so I'll be heading to Berlin. You know, I've always admired Berlin, um. Berlin, Berlin is built on people who think the way that I do. Um, uh, I mean, when, when West Berlin was surrounded by the old communist East Germany, um, they had difficulty convincing people to live there. So the people who lived there um, had a, um, didn't have to do military service. They had tax breaks. They had very lax drug laws. Um, they And they were... There's a whole spirit of Berlin is based on anarchy, punk, squats, you know, things like that. And then, of course, decadence. Um, and these are all things that really appeal to me. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to a new creative challenge. Um, because I, as a creative person, I get stimulated by... Uh, uh, by new things, by new experiences, and uh, I mean every time I travel and um, when I write, I, I my, my my inspiration just heightens uh, because I I get triggered by all these new things that I'm experiencing. Um, so uh, um, and I'm hoping Berlin will do that to me. I've I've been pretty not not creative, but. It, it, there hasn't been sparks flying since I wrote the last book and I really need the sparks to fly because that's how I operate. So I'm hoping Berlin will play a role in recreating that. Can you tell us a bit more about the book? Okay, so Melki Eilige Koeie has spent the past few weeks, like maybe 10, 12 weeks on, on the top 20 um, or sellers. So it's doing really well. Um, the, the book has, um, has had a very nice response from both within the literary community. Um, I mean, it got a positive reviews from both Kuis Kombais and Joan Hambidge, which are both very highly regarded critics. Um, but the most important thing for me is that uh, the book is attracting a lot of readers who don't usually read books. Um, the, uh, the, the launch in Cape Town had 150 people, of which maybe five of them have been to book launches before, which means that, that the book is reaching um, outside the standard literary circles. Um, and for me, that's always been really important. Um, I, I've always been convinced that you can be more subversive writing for Heisgenoot 
then you can be writing for the Mail and Guardian because with the Mail and Guardian you're preaching to the converted with high synod people are still nullable, you know, um, and I feel that the book is is, is, is doing that kind of thing. So uh, I'm very happy with Melk the Heilige Koeie. Unfortunately, a bestseller in this country is between three and five thousand, which means that your royalty check you know, does a good sushi lunch or, or maybe like a, a, a couple of bottles of single malt, you know. Um, but unfortunately, it's not a sustainable salary or income that, that it generates. And how do you guys like, like Dion Mayer, um, who's South Africa's version of Stephen King and Dean Kuntz and all the big guys playing to one? How does he pay the bills with... with well, he, I mean, to... he obviously... Firstly, I don't agree with the Dean Kuntz thing. Uh, because he's Dion Mayer's sex scenes aren't as good as Dean Koontz's. Um, but for the rest, I'll, I'll give it. Look, I mean, he, he obviously has the recipe all worked out. He's a mainstream um, writer. Um, he's, uh, his books are made into movies, television series. He's been translated most probably into double figure languages, you know. Um, so uh, the, the kind of stuff that he writes and the kind of stuff that I write is, is obviously worlds apart. Um, he he appeals to a much broader audience than me. Um, so yeah, each to their own, huh? And then taking a step back earlier when we spoke about Berlin, you went a bit into the history of Berlin and so yes. forth. Yes. And as I know you on a personal level, um, history, you're, you're quite a big history fundy. Um, do you think that, that if you look at the youth of today, um, are they going through a stage where history doesn't matter to them? Yes, I, I think I think that uh, that history has uh, become irrelevant to the, to the, um, younger people or to the new generations, and I think it has happened because people are killing history, and there are so many versions of history, especially in South Africa. I uh, I, I I like history a lot, and I think that the way um, to make history popular again is to use popular culture in order to, to do it. Uh, we did this television show called Fortuinsukers, um, in which we used uh, historically correct facts about the Kruger millions um, and combine it um, with a, a, a treasure hunt slash an amazing race kind of concept. Um, and it, and it, it, had a, it had a huge response. It had a massive response. Um, and uh, the, the places that we featured in the series um, uh, some of them showed up to a thousand percent increase in attendance after it was on television. So the interest for history is still there, but the way in which history is taught is really boring and passe. Um, so um, people who who want to reinforce history or or, or, um, or share history, um, they need to find new ways of doing it. I think Punk in Africa, the the documentary I made. I think that's a very good case in point of, of how history should be told or, or, or should be popularized. And I think for Tainzukers is just as good a, uh, an example. The great thing, of course, about going to Berlin um, is that I have this whole new history that I have to learn. I can tell you stories about Joburg. I can tell, tell you stories about South Africa. I can tell you stories about the music industry, but it's all here. Yeah. Now I have a whole new history that I have to learn that's a couple of millennia longer than the one I've had to memorize up until now but I'm hoping to be in a situation there where I can share that history also on popular culture uh, platforms with other people yeah that sounds brilliant uh, thank you for that answer it's, it's very cool um, and then in closing uh, what what do you want to do uh, regardless of opportunity presenting itself what what do you what would you like to do like anything on this planet like okay a project cool. or whatever so I always had this vision where I wanted to sit on the beach, get stoned, and then surf. Okay. I am now at the age where I want to sit on the beach, get stoned, and I'll watch somebody else surf. All right. Um, so the, the big things that I've wanted to do, I have done, which is actually a bit sad to some extent, it means I don't have a lot of aspirations. What I really would like to do, however, is to to write a book that gets translated into various languages. I would like to be somebody who writes books and can live off the royalties. And that in South Africa is not achievable for a lot of people, um, especially 
if you know if you if you're not involved in academics a lot of authors here you know they 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 academics and then they write on the side or they software developers and they write on the side me i would like to write and uh, hopefully um that is where i'll end up the dion mayor of fact with better sex scenes <laughs> No, I don't want to be Dion Mayer. I want to be Dion Moss. I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with who I am. And I think that um, I have built up my reputation over the years as somebody with a certain level of credibility and a certain and certain political views and social views and pop culture views. And, and I, I like who I am and I'm very comfortable with who I am. So I would rather be the first Dion Moss than the second Dion Mayer. Sounds good. Thank you, Dion. It's my pleasure. I always like talking to you, Sean.